Hello, folks, one more time. Welcome to another program in the series, Crosstalk on Enterprise TV. Well, Crosstalk, as it were, is when two distinct worlds collide. Uh, that's two sides to an argument, the one for the other against. And today we're looking at the, the, east, the question, has Tinubu failed on security? Has Tinubu failed, President Tinubu failed on security. Originally conceived as protection against military threat from external attacks, national security is widely understood to include non-military dimensions, that's security from terrorism, minimization of crime, economic security, environmental security, plus food and cyber security. Nigeria, our Nigeria, has been gripped by many threats to national security, no thanks to insurgency, kidnapping, cybercrime, hard drugs, and so on. On assumption of, of office on May 29, 2023, President Bola Tinubu was going to inherit an insecurity overhang from former President Muhammadu Buhari's eight years in, in power. Uh, the country, as it were, is knee-deep into insecurity, which provokes the question of whether the president, Tinobu, that is, has failed on security. Let's have a conversation. And uh, my two combatants are Barrister Evans Uferi, uh, is a constitutional lawyer and a public affairs analyst. Barrister Uferi, welcome. Thank you. My pleasure. We do also have, at the other end, Mr. Akin Fatunke, Chartered Accountant and Public Affairs Analyst, too. I greet you, sir. My pleasure to be here, Sidney Jones. Thank you. So, like what I'm, an issue dropped on this table. Would you say the president has failed on security, gentlemen? Because when you look at my side, so I'm a gentleman. I don't think Evans will be a gentleman. <laughs> so, yes, uh, being, I will say. Be, being a gentleman, we, we are told, is a good thing, but not after a discussion like this. We'll find out. We'll find out. <laughs> I dare say that uh, failure um, is a moving target. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, you start from the, the spots, you do what you call work in progress. You assess environmental impact assessments, as they call it, and then get to a point and look at the scorecard. Uh, are you are you are you on red? Are you on yellow? Are you on blue? After that assessment, you then then go back, lessons learned, and then take a decision. That at the end of the period, we accountants talk about end of the year. Uh, politicians talk about the end of the tenure. But um, I know the holy polo idea and lawyers who always think about right here and now, what are we seeing? And I will be hard pressed putting all this together to come to a conclusion that President Bola Tinubu took over from President Muhammadu Buhari um, has failed. Um, has he done well? In a number of respects, it has. After the May 29 um, swearing in that you mentioned, in my honest opinion, I saw uh, within two days or three days, the president calling all the service chiefs together. And one of the things he told them is that I don't want you working in silos. Uh, we need collaboration. You are not competing against uh, one another. And I think that that went very positively uh, into the minds of people. And not too long after that, St. John's will remember the DSS and the EFCC at one point in time started fighting for office space here and there. Something similar to the old regime, the immediate old regime. And President Wala Tinubu intervened and said, look, hey, come on. Yeah, there are you guys and all that. So, on account of that, I think they started very, very well. 
and they pledged that they were going to work together. Now, as we move on in time, I just say right now we are looking at about nine months. I just say six months, nine days. I can go in 11 months. As in fact, indeed, after ten, 100, ten months. In fact, after 100, 100 days, things were looking a bit worn out, a bit tired, a lot of blood. Absolutely no doubt about that. But for each of the moves uh, that is being done by the terrorists, the bandits, and the kidnappers, we were able to see quick moves at attempts to decimate in a way that you will never get back to the situations where we had in Borno so many of the local governments in the hand of terrorists. So that is number one. Number two is the fact that when the present regime came on, I know for a fact that the European Union, that's a bit of challenge looking at the legality of the elections and the United States made pledges and supports. Um, so the Tucano jets that uh, had been given and had been put under a bit of a comma uh, because the fear was, will you be able to use it to get the, the bad people out of the way. And Nigeria uh, took a decision that, yeah, we could. Yes, we fell along, along the line, but essentially we were able to drive the, the hoodlums I can put simply, away out of it. So put, yeah, simply, put, put, put simply, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu is still work in progress. President Bola Ahmed Tinubu is in my honest opinion, um, getting the better of some of these terrorists who have decided that they will go after the soft, soft, soft targets. Kidnaps were made, almost invariably, not too long after that, they were released. Okay, I can, I, I can, we are constrained by time. Would you say... Mr. President has failed on security. Mr. President has not failed on security. All right. It cannot be said to, be, to have failed on security. Okay. Vice Taufeli, he, um, he has looked, he, he has told us a story. Yes. Um, if you can compress it for us. Has the President failed on security? Yes. Um, let me look at uh, the office of the President is created by Section 130 of the Constitution. And in that session 130, um, the duties and functions of the president are spelled out according to law. So from the proceed of evidence, we need to earn the truth and deal with it. From the evidence on ground and from the provisions of law, the president is supposed to be the chief security officer of the country by the constitution. He is to lead the army that which is created under section 217. So the, that's the why he's named commander in chief. Yes. Section 217. Then the police force created under section 214 of the constitution. Now the function of the president is to steer the armed forces in a way that we secure both external and internal security of the country and put Nigeria on the scale of safety so that the masses will have a sense of belonging. Uh, they will feel they are living in a country and they will feel the impact of government in their lives. Above all else, a sense of safety. Yes, a sense of safety. Especially in peace time. Yes. Now, from the evidence before us as we speak, the president has completely failed at that. Because one, when he came in, he even took away the economic safety of the people by making a thoughtless pronouncement that subsidy is gone without thinking as to, there's what you call the law of I, outcomes. I, 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 what do you mean thoughtless? Yes, the policy, the policy subsidy is gone is a thoughtless one. 
It's a thoughtless one because even though there was a budget that did not capture it, he should have known as a finance expert that if you take away the common commodity that everyone benefits from, because that is the only thing that have a spread across, because your food, your drinks, your everything, your livelihood is transported with uh, fuel. The, then, okay, the premium the, modest period. Yes, then he took it off without making proper, it was after he took it off. You they, mean they take off the subsidy on Yes, on he took off the subsidy yeah. and the price went up. Yeah. And that also so affected did that every in other. any way affect it, the security situation? It, does, it did, food security and even the general security because now have more people have dropped into the net of criminality as we speak than we have them before now. So he, he, he took away the economic security of the people and the people, their life were threatened. Then he went further and began to think about what to do. The people who are your primary focus became an afterthought. Now, I started thinking, Nancy will give 12 million families money. Later, I turned around and said, no, they will give it to the governors. He gave it to the governors. When he gave it to the governors, there were no palliative whatsoever. In my village, eight bags of rice came as palliative. Eight bags of rice contained 240 cups of rice. Each family got three, three cups. Uh, that depend, became, they, depending on which cup. Yes, <laughs> that, that became the milk cup. That became the palliative that the president or the federal government delivered to the citizens. So if you look at it from the security point, within the last eight months that this president has been in office, more persons have been kidnapped. More persons, even the IDPs, where people are displaced, people have been kidnapped there on daily basis. You know, if you put that together, you have, you, you, you cannot say the government has not failed. Vice Alfele, they are have. not kidnapped on a daily basis. Uh, it, it, it happens, but, but, but hold on. I was going to tell you, President Bola Tinubu inherit, inherited an urgent tab table or table. No, no, it, it goes it, beyond, it, beyond it, an inheritance. And again, that is the reason why we have to put things in perspective. Um, Barrister Ufeli is making the point about food security as an example, which I think I agree with absolutely. Uh, the view of food security we knew as far back as eight years, mm. ten years before now, that we were going to be here. That Nigeria was not only going to be here, Nigeria had not collectively planned not to fail. We did. And um, we did not do anything about the lag dam. We knew the thing was going to be released. I, I can, otherwise, President Tinubu should not take uh, the blame alone. That's what we are suggesting. What I am saying is that it's a moving target. It's like a football and all that. The person that is going to play the penalty and score the penalty, yes, he will be the one that will say he scored the penalty or missed the penalty. But there were a lot of groundwork that got into there, the fouling, the falling, even the keeper from the other side. My point, therefore, is simple. To say that President Bola Tinungu removed the subsidy is a misnomer. It cannot be. From the finance perspective, we talk about budget and we look at budget. The finance manager does not waits until the D day before he now says things are not in appropriation, as uh, uh, my, my dear friend Barista Feli will say. As at 12 months before then, it became a moving target because President Muhammadu Buhari did not have the kind of strength of political will. Like the willpower. Yes to do it. Eventually, he kicked the can down the road. I don't have a problem. Um, President Bola Tinubu has said, look, don't pity me. The point is, Nigeria was bleeding on all sides. And by saying, subsidy is gone. As at May 29, and people are saying, you should have waited for one month. And I can tell you, human behavior 
Even if he waited and made the pronouncement July 1, we are still going to be where we are at. The forces against that will strengthen. Six months before that time, since I belong to the oil and gas industry, when the bad boys and the bad girls in the industry knew that uh, some things were going to come in, what did they do? They do the commingling and they brought in the bad fuel. And suddenly we are now going to now be facing a lot of cues. The smugglers were smiling to the bank. A good, strong manager will take a hard decision today so that more and more of us will be able to get the okay, the subsidy was a digression. I, I agree. Now I, I, I will tie it now to let's security. go there now. How will you then say that you wanted, and it wasn't, um, it wasn't just the subsidy, and also the racketeers that we have in the foreign exchange system are going to be taken out and taken edge on? Naturally, it will have consequences. Because as at that point in time, we were have heavily borrowed. The multinational institutions were all saying that they are not going to give us new, new lines. It was even being speculated that China is going to come and take some of our infrastructures. And then again, and then say, look, we go there, we have to stop this bleeding. In stopping this bleeding, there's going to be a bit more of pain, in fact, excruciating pain. The issue of um, the IDPs, the Boko Haram, the decimation, is not necessarily a thing of the stomach. It's not a stomach infrastructure thing. It all was right, more of right. an attitude that we are not going to make Nigeria governable. And what the president, Bola Tinubu, do? He said, hey, wait a minute. I'm going to make sure one, I get my team, get them in place. Against all wrongs of play, I am going to look for extra budgetary much more than ever before, to give to them. Even if you put all the budget of Nigeria into place, we'll still not be able to help us, you know, um, to, to, to stand the, that, the tide. You do not then say yeah. that that uh, Noah, that Noah, who has been preaching and been talking about the fact that the, the apocalypse is on, on its way, you will say that it's failed because some other people in the territory did not listen or they were not going to to, to try and listen. Failure, failure on the side, and the final thing I want to say uh, to my, my dear friend, uh, Barry Evans. I know you have quoted the Constitution, and you are spot on, but you will not quote that Constitution in isolation. That Constitution says, isolation yes, isolation of what? In man? isolation of some other things that should be added on. Mm. The President, is the commander in chief, absolutely no doubt. But when it comes to internal security, we have a constitution that dangles here and there. The subnationals also have responsibilities in their various states to do what needs to be done. If uh, Petrina is in trouble, president, if uh, Sirius is in trouble, uh, President. Evans, if Aki is in trouble, President. Evans, if you feel and then we leave, what he's saying, we you leave that the, the essence of the issue. basic yeah. things out of place. W what I For now then, to now then say, if you, if you tell me here, as I'm sitting here, to say Nigeria has failed, yes, maybe we are, we are talking of Nigeria. But to now then say, I would say no, no, it's no, President Bola no, Tidobo. You, you know what I'm saying? So, so, because... You see, that subsidy issue was a digression, as you said, and, and I, I absolutely agree. He should have understood that uh, removing the subsidy was not the solution. But to get the refineries to work, he has never, he has never made mention. He has never made. He, he has never been. Right, never, don't go there. No, hold on. Don't, don't go, go there. No, it was part of I to go to the refineries. What I can yes, tell it's, it's not a question. The refineries that we have were sitting on a bed of oil. Go and bring an angel. Nobody was going to be able to do those with families. So why should, we, why should we vote the president who can, who can solve our, our problems? Oh, I mean, no. He went there because, no, of course, he campaigned that he's going to solve the problem. He could solve the problem, but he's not going to solve the problem by lying to you. He, he, will, not, he will not, but okay. he should have known that. And he will not go to get the subsidy was not the solution. No, he should have taken on 
The we will remove some money is a solution because we are going to stop the bleeding. But we are we, 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 we are supporting the subsidy. Gentlemen, we are supporting the subsidy as we speak. Just, just a minute. We agreed, and I dare say that the presidential candidates all agreed on subsidy going. So but the mode, none of it, them was going to tell It's not us. enough to agree that subsidy should go. What would you do thereafter? You have just hit the well, What would you do thereafter? Would you, after would you have removed subsidy? I would have removed subsidy, but I would have made sure that I don't have to remove it immediately. I will make sure the refineries are up and running before removing it. So that the refineries can cannot work. The refineries can work. They are already working. Uh, All the modular refineries, the modular refineries, that is the answer to the question. We are talking about, about modular refineries. Modular refineries is different from the main refineries. Yeah, those ones, those, those modular, modular refineries, again, I will tell you. Human security. Those security. modular refineries, okay, security, security. If you are going to make them to work the way they need to work, it became a waste. Licenses were given to, to so many, and they were not able to do it. Please, Why? Let's because the pricing was so let, 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 Let's talk about security. So, because it they have a tie. No, no, the, 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 uh, they have a tie to security. They have a tie to security. Some people will come out and tell you that because they have been in Zimbabwe, because there is no more security, there is no job to do, and all that is the reason why they they are not doing bad victory. No, come on. No, I I disagree. Why we have banditry is because we do not have a common ethos, we do not have a common vision. Nigeria became so unwieldy, and we still insisted that looking at the center was going to be the solution. Now, in looking at the center and making it to be a solution, you know what that, that does to you? You just want to match on the same spot. But you made a point. All the presidential candidates decided that subsidy has to go. All of them can be wrong. Because they have always been wrong. All of them cannot be wrong. No, they can't be wrong. All of them can't be wrong. I mean, they have not been, all of them have not been able to manage. No, 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 no. The let Why they are not wrong? Uh, so, let's so move away from subsidies. Why, 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 why they are not wrong? The, the security we yearn for let's today. Security. The security we yearn for today is that the sub-regional government have a role to play. That's quite correct. I mean, we know that it's part of what the of it. security is. But you know, in some national government, today, on 2024, is taking 2.5 billion to, to, to sponsor people to complete village. Is that governance? And then we are still talking that, and that, we, that, we that may, looking at Bolatinungu and say Bolatinungu has failed. That, no. that, that may not be governance. That may, that may not be governance, but we are saying the president, the role, priority. the role that the president ought to play in this whole thing. He has not done that. He has done that. And he has He has called all the governors together. <laughs> he has called all the traditional rulers together. Not too long ago, he called the traditional rulers and said, look, yes, these people are looking at soft target. We are not going to get intimidated. Uh, intimidated what, what, is doing, is, what he's doing is reactionary. He's not planning security. He's not planning economic fortune, which will reduce insecurity. He's just looking at the issue from the top, how to uh, go and make a defense and then protect uh, the citizens in the way yeah, you see, are you see, are are it's are not, are it's not, it's not working see, on the long-term solution. Are you aware right? that, that the, is the, planning, the planning aspect yeah. of it is that it's made more money for security. How? By taking these abusive subsidies and putting more money into the subnationals. He has also voted quite substantial to the security. You can't say that is not planning. That is planning. It's not planning. It is so bad. Things are going so there, bad. There's no results. There's no results. Yeah, well, the results are going to come. You cannot even differentiate between the government of Mawad Bari and that of Tinubu. Because they are just the same thing. Nothing, nothing, nothing. They nothing. are the same because they are. You, but, is this going to be a They are the same because they are the same APC. Very but there is a Mark, it's going to be a very tortuous 16 years. We now have a handsome president. The two of them have no clue of what to do. Talks through the issues that confront us. I've never seen him talk through any issue. Oh, oh he's still. I've never seen him. I've, I, in fact, as we are speaking, he's still speaking through it. No. He's still speaking through it. No. A, and a, he has a president, a president has, that has capacity. He's going to sign. He's going to sign. A president that has capacity is mean, not difficult to identify. If a, if, if a president is going to walk and then dismantle insecurity, it, it won't take him three months to do that. 
That, that, this that, one, that becomes so this one is neither yeah. here nor there. He's yeah. not here today, here tomorrow. Why he doesn't understand the issues. Why? He doesn't know how to address Why? them. Why? 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 Buhari, commander in chief, tested armed general, still talk about kinetic, still talk about carrot and stick. In fact, we still continue to make sure that at the end of the day, it has to be carrot and stick. What has Bala Tinubu done? He's decided to walk the talk. Carrot, yes, stick. At the same time, we begin to see much difference in the in, in way forward. Yes, it's overwhelming. The uh, other attendants. We have seen difference, much difference. In this economy, in this uh, current administration, yes, I've not seen any man different. I am saying it, and I'm still uh, saying it. That, <laughs> that, that, that hope there's an advancement. Is going to I have that mad hope and believe that people that are, are people that the government, government, people not you and I now, people that the government are even watching over in the IDPs are being kidnapped. Where well, they went to fetch firewood to tell you that government has abandoned them a long time ago. Okay. They will stop thinking a long time ago. And okay. this government is not even thinking at all. Okay, so are those IDP in the states? Is huh? is Bola Tinubu? We're not talking about it's not the, it's not the, the government. Chief security I give it state. to the chief security officer. The governor does not uh, control the army now. Well, no state. The yes, governor does not control the army. The because governor does not control the army. some of the things he, he does. This issue is about the uh, territorial integrity of the country. Yeah, so in that case, do we have a territory? The, 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 Evans, do yeah. we have a territorial have, integrity that we are called Nigeria? We have it. Nigeria have. is a country. Nigeria is, is a state by force. But Nigeria is not a nation. So you cannot, you cannot, we can then hold have a territory. We have a territory. We do have a territory. We have a territory. We have a territory. We have a different. What we don't have is that we don't we have a government that I manages the view of how we should be looking at Nigeria. So, my, the so where I come you know. from, I want a woman to lead me in t on some other areas in this country. And I say, some people will say, no, a woman cannot lead. Are we the same country? No, we cannot. Gentlemen, is that is that map of difference that you talk about? The, 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 producer, the producer says it's time to wind down. So, uh, by Safeli, I want you to spend the next 60 seconds uh, bury the, the, the discussion. President Tinubu has failed on, on security. 60 seconds. He, he has failed largely because he has not been able to put together what it takes to dismantle insecurity. Um, the, from the, you see, in law, it we will not give you credit when the evidence are overwhelmingly against you. We will convict, or we will say you have failed, or we will find you liable for the, for the actions. If you look at the evidence on ground, the evidence on ground showed that this president does not understand the issues he has not done what he ought to do, which is even contained in his manifesto, that is going to take care of security in the country. He has not been able to do that. The economy, he has not been able to put it together. There was a point where the CBN governor and the other ministers, they were all came together, they were talking about the Naira and the dollar, and they were confused. They had to get other consultants to discuss it. They all came up with white papers. Those white papers have been kept somewhere because everybody's confused. When people are incompetent, they are incompetent. He could be good in other areas, maybe in whatever he has done in the past and all that. But as the president of Nigeria, he has not done well. I mean, we have examples of countries who were worse off than we were. Singapore and the rest of them were worse off than we were. A leader came and did what he ought to do within a very short period. So if somebody does not have the capacity, does not have it. All right. It does not matter how well, much okay. we put on it. He All doesn't right. have By it. Sir have it. Someday, I will wait. Someday, we'll thank, you. thank you. Thank you, Vice Chair. Uh, Mr. Fatunke, in 60 seconds, tell us that President Tinubu has not failed on security. He has not failed on security because all the attendants, the attenuating things, are being taken care of, taking the bad boys out and the cabal, okay, out of our oil and gas, and of course, his um, um, CBN governor on the monetary side is beginning to work wonders. Now, on the security proper itself, 
I dare say that uh, security is everybody's business, uh, and I respect Evans uh, for some of the other things that he have also mentioned. One of them is the fact that there has to be some wastage copying. And in this president got up and said, oh, silence is what? Please come have a look at it again. This president got up and said, within my ambit of influence, let's begin to look at issue of state police. He's put it out there. So far, maybe nine, maybe 16, not up to a negligible few, are coming on. You cannot skin a man's head without that person's concept. The concept of Nigeria is faulty, and it's so faulty that even bring up an angel who does not get in there. So now, I also believe that this president is work in progress. I see a president unlike other presidents that I have seen, who is confident he comes out and gives us hope, a ray of hope. There are the soft issues that come into, into this. By the time you now begin to now then say we captured more people, look at what happened in, uh, in, in Canada lately. I made a test of it. What is the number? He's sitting in Abuja, okay? And then he says it's about 289, it's 137. Who should we believe? This is a country that is standing and is sitting pretty on falsehood. And until we all get together, it's not a matter of the president. It's a matter of the structure. The structure is not there. Within that structure, trying to be very, very straight in a rough jacket, he'll get bruised. We continue to get bruised. But I believe, Mr. President, that there is light at the end of the tunnel. If all of us get together, we are not together as we speak. People are smarting from politics. People are talking on 2027, where we should all put our hands together to live so that we can have at least a semblance of a country that you can come and preside on. To that extent, President Kola Tinungu, I would say, has not failed, doing his best within, calling for help, both internal and external. And I know that by the special grace of all put together, all these terrorists, Bandits and their cousins, and their cousins, and their nieces, mm. and their brothers, and their kindred will go to naught in this country. All right. Um, okay, you, you, you just talked about light being at the end of the tunnel. Yes. One hopes the light is not, not that of an unrushing train. On train. Well, you can yeah. put it in the middle of the tunnel. So okay. if that is the case, you can see it there so, and then shift it. Uh, let me thank my discussants, um, or shall I say, my combatants this this day. Um, Barista Evans Ufeli, many thanks for your time. My pleasure. Akin Fadoke, I cannot thank you enough. For I will also thank Evans. He came with scold missiles, but I came with anti scold missiles. So okay. We need this action. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, let the, the debate continue from your end of town. Uh, our job here is done. Um, until the next time, this is yours sincerely, Citizen Jones Hussein saying bye-bye now. We are done on Crosstalk. Enterprise TV, a tradition of truth.